Unlike some of its peers, The Forest, the survival horror game from Canadian-based studio End Night Games, delivered on not just the popular Gather and Craft survival game format, but also added a surprisingly complex and equally bananas story featuring cannibals and mutants. With the immediate arrival of its long-awaited sequel, Sons of the Forest, comes not only the pressure to top the beloved experience of the original, but also to add some new and increasingly wild surprises. And based on the five hours that I've played so far, I'm not only excited about the sequel's potential, but also confident that End Night could revolutionise the survival genre. The forest begins with a simple premise. You've crash landed on a mysterious peninsula and begin your quest to survive at all costs. There was also the optional objective of finding your kidnapped son, a task that would take you down a wild and disturbing narrative rabbit hole populated by flesh-hungry mutants. Sons of the Forest largely shares the same setup, substituting your son for a missing billionaire. It's a basic idea, but one that allows you to jump straight into the action allowing players who have no intention of progressing the rescue mission to solely focus on building their very own lakeside resort with some friends right away. Just like its predecessor, you can play, build, and cause chaos with seven of your friends in co-op, but you can still see everything Sons of the Forest has to offer in single player. The big difference this time though, is that even when you play solo, you're not alone. Enter Calvin. At the very start of Sons of the Forest, you're introduced to Calvin, an elite soldier who not only survived the helicopter crash that stranded you on the island, but is also very much along for the survival ride as an AI companion. While Calvin has suffered some major head trauma that's left him unable to speak, his injuries have not, perhaps surprisingly, prevented him from being extremely helpful. In an apparent effort to replicate the multiplayer experience for solo players, Calvin will follow you around and respond to commands issued via a bunch of handy quick select options on a notepad. He'll take orders to see out your less than desirable busy work, such as chopping down trees and gathering logs. During my hands-on, the value of having an AI companion was immensely noticeable. There was a huge benefit to sending Calvin off to find resources, while my co-op partner and I focused on designing our structure. I'd regularly turn around to find a fresh pile of logs for our disposal, with Calvin already on his merry way to collect more. Not only will Calvin somewhat provide company for solo players, but he offers helpful, time-saving resources even when in a group, putting a significant dent in the busy work of a survival game. This affords more time to either sculpt a masterpiece or plow forward on the cannibal killing quest. Calvin has a mind of his own though, well, at least to some degree. He sits down to rest when he gets tired and seeks water when he's thirsty. He'll also become upset if you treat him poorly, which makes him less productive and thus decreases the value as a companion. And if you decide you're not interested in having a worker bee along for the ride, you have the option to disable Calvin in the most realistic way possible. Shoot him in the head and you'll remove him from your session permanently. You're limited to one Calvin per multiplayer session, so the dream of a legion of Calvins can't be fulfilled. But the developers assured me that there are other companions you can find as you progress, each with their own unique AI. During my playtime, I caught a glimpse of Virginia, a mutant with three arms and three legs. She quickly scarpered once I approached her and definitely had more of a skittish sensibility than Calvin. But the developers told me that she can eventually be recruited and will become attached to you over time should you be kind to her. They compared her instincts to that of an elusive and independent cat, which stands in opposition to Calvin's lovable and obedient dog. The AI improvements aren't limited to just companions though. On our expedition, we came across several groups of enemies, ranging from a cluster of cannibals to a mob of monstrosities, each demonstrating their own impressive decision-making abilities. It felt like my enemies were thinking and making active decisions based on not only my actions, but also their situations and environment. Particularly in first-person horror games, enemies generally have two modes of behavior, patrol and attack. But in Sons of the Forest, some foes would just be extremely wary and just interested in watching what I do, while others would charge in aggressively, only to back down when things didn't go their way. I saw enemies consoling their fallen friends, changing their clothes depending on the weather conditions, and even trying to destroy my newly erected home when my back was turned. It was clear to see that the enemy's brains were not only following coded rules, but also adapting their thoughts based on the external influences. The developers explained to me that certain enemies with leadership qualities can influence the decisions of others and even promote ideas in their ranks such as religion, and that each individual has their own tastes, desires and proclivities. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
From my small taste of Sons of the Forest, I didn't really get a sense of how deep this system is and how much it'll affect your experience. But the teasers I saw filled my mind with dozens of possibilities. I saw enemies adapting to change in their ecosystem and weather conditions, which now cycle through seasons that change as you progress. I even accidentally triggered a war after I stupidly opened the entrance to the game's complex underground cave network and released a faction of mutants into the domain of another tribe. My simple decision caused their living space to change and encouraging them to adjust their focus. And after that little taste of chaos, I can't wait to see how flexible this system can be. As you'd expect, the titular forest makes a return and it looks better than ever. From the complex density of foliage to the gorgeous rainfall and beautifully lit cave stalactites amongst the hanging corpses and mutant fetuses, the graphical power on show here rivals the majority of AAA releases. It was a joy to explore without even the slightest hint of repetition in its design. With a tease of bunkers, villages, and God knows what else in a world that's promised to be four times larger than the original, I can easily see myself getting lost and then sidetracked in the wilderness for hours on end. But at its core, Sons of the Forest is a survival game, and so when you're not exploring, there's a good chance you're building. The construction tools have been significantly overhauled for the sequel. Gone are the floating blue ghost building blocks, replaced by user-friendly, realistic presentation of wilderness carpentry. Instructions are more literal, and actions are contextual. Instead of just loading resources into a ghost version of the final product, you're now free to, with magnetic and snapping assistance, manually place logs and sticks in the direction that you'd like, allowing for a complete customization of your structure instead of following a predetermined design. My partner, Calvin, and I immediately set to work on building a lakeside domicile of our own, and what began as a traditional design immediately blossomed when we realized the only limitation was our imagination. You're working on every placement by hand, and thus the structural points present not only a decision, but an opportunity for expression. I was informed that the option of the more traditional blueprint builds is still there for the purists, but I found the DIY construction far more appealing than the IKEA approach. Then, of course, there's the optional story to follow. From the teasers in the trailers, this is implied to be bigger and perhaps even crazier than the original, and hopefully continues directly on from the forest's cliffhanger. But amongst the time spent constructing and fighting off hordes of cannibals, I didn't really get a sense of how the story was going to go beyond the initial premise. It did feel very familiar to the story of the forest though, which I guess makes sense in the term of dropping players right into the action. But I'd be lying if I said I didn't have concerns that it could potentially retread old ground. My hope is this simply serves as a jumping off point to go in some truly crazy directions, and it develops a narrative through line for the first game that still feels cohesive. But time will tell once I get my hands on the full game and manage to pull myself away from building a replica of the Ewok village and destroying the lives of the unsuspecting locals. Sons of the Forest appears to evolve and build on every aspect of its predecessor, with a focused goal of realism and developing a flexible ecosystem, and it feels like the building blocks are there to create something truly special. But its killer feature is the addition of impressively sophisticated and smarter AI enemies and companions that could not only provide a huge leap forward for the series, but the survival game genre as a whole. And if you like that video and want to find out more about Sons of the Forest, why not check out everything that we know so far? And for everything else Sons of the Forest, stick with IGN.